Hi, folks, here are viewers. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of the news. We begin right away with some major stories tonight. Insecurity remains the major preoccupation of the local population of Dwala and also security forces. In this edition of the news, we will be taking you into the heart of Makea, a neighborhood of the Dwala to municipality, which is noted for the commercialization and also consumption of hard drugs. And also, the entire world is mourning the sudden demise of former Cameroonian strike. Bami Modest in this edition of the news we will be bringing to you reactions from across the world. Stay with us for details. Welcome back viewers, thank you so much for staying with us on this edition of the news. Officials of the first batch of trainees from the Gendarmerie Officers Training School have rounded up a one-day field exercise in the city of Tuala. The exercise that took them from the littoral Gendarmerie Legion uh, to the seaport and back to some enterprises in the city of Douala was aimed at getting them in touch with security challenges of Douala and the littoral region in general. And now in the excerpts which comes up next, Gendarmerie Captain Asongalem Yvonne, um, Deputy Course Director of the institution, comes back to the training offered and their mission in Douala. Let's now come to the excerpts of the Gendarmerie Captain Asongalem Yvonne. Um, she is the course director of the institution. She comes back to the training offered and their mission in Douala. Yeah, it's the very first time the National Gendarmerie is organizing a company's commander's course. Before now, we used to do it at the Combined Military Academy, but today, Gendarmerie has organized its own. Why? This falls in place with the 2001 reforms that was put in place by the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces, the President of the Republic, President Paul Beer, that aimed to professionalize the military. So this course comes into play to give to the Gendarmeries the specificities of their profession. So I have for now 61 trainees four from central african republic and three from congo brazzaville and the rest are cameroonians the content of the their pedagogic content of the course is very rich because they do it in terms of models we have four models the first one we're talking about um, law maintaining anti-terrorism the second we are talking about carrying out judicial police missions the third we are talking about tactical missions what we call in French deal the defense opérationnel du territoire and the fourth we are talking about command within the gendarmerie how do I command my unit how do I maintain relationship with the public how do I make sure the citizens are secured and their goods are protected so it's within all of this context after having done all of this in class that the the curricula explains that it's not only good for the students to remain in class studying this but it's equally important for them to come to the field and get to know what's actually happening so the presence today on the field during this field trip is first of all to understand the security environment of Douala through exposés that will be done and at the end of the day, one of the officers whose name we got as just Link Kokam, a gendarmerie lieutenant, comes back to what they obtained on the field in this other except. This field trip has been beneficial to us or uh, to me in particular because like it permits or it permitted me to better know what was taught in class. Then touching from seeing from what the others are doing, the, the units in the field are doing, and then it helps us to better understand their missions and the National Gendarmerie's missions. That is ensuring the security of people and their goods, and also to work with other security forces. Let's say we have this 50% studying in class, and then when we come now here, yeah, it's easy for us to eventually understand whatever thing was taught in class 
so it's very easy for us and for me in particular because I learned a lot from and now we take you to the central region of the country to present to you the state of a government technical high school in that part of the country the laboratories have insufficient equipment and most of the school buildings are windowless and the walls are falling off let's now have a presentation of that school with uh, Lucy Diengo is here We are coming back to this report of a government technical high school in the central region of the country. The school is in total dilapidation. The walls and the roof are falling off and the, the laboratory of the school also has insufficient equipment. The authorities say they have written to governmental hierarchy to no avail. Let's now have more with Lucy Diengo is here. Buildings, falling roof and uncompleted classes as some of the characteristics of Lise Technique, the Nituku Central Region. According to the school discipline master, Ashi Kofana, they are not just having poor infrastructures, but also limited staff and equipment. Civil engineering students are forced to study under harsh conditions with dust and rain splashes that get into the classrooms. The buildings are without windows that sometimes distracts the students. The school administrators decry the absence of workshops for tailoring and civil engineering students which is somehow hampering their results. A difficult and complicated situation for students and also the principal of Lise Tenig Nutuku, who says they have addressed several letters to government authorities, which has yielded no fruit. And now we talk health with the resurgence of COVID-19 in China. Stringent measures have been uh, taken by some countries on travelers coming from that country according to the government's decisions to stop any possible new wave of coronavirus pandemic in some countries. Let's now have more on that with a staff lady Immaculate Fogwe. Resurgence of the COVID-19 pandemic in China. Cameron's Minister of Public Health, Dr. Manauda Malachi, in a communique dated December 28, urged his health collaborators to be vigilant and reinforce COVID-19 barrier measures in their area of command. He demanded a systematic COVID-19 test be done on all patients who come for consultation. He called for the reinforcement of vaccination and intensification of sensitization campaigns. At the Douala International Airport, a source tells us that nothing has changed as passengers coming into the country have to show a less than 48 hours COVID-19 negative test. They are equally urged to undergo another test which is obligatory. In other African countries like Morocco, stringent measures have been taken. Morocco has imposed an entry ban on travelers coming from China. According to the government, this is in a bid to stay safe of a possible new wave of the coronavirus infection. The ban includes all individuals regardless of their nationality. It is unclear how long the restriction will remain in effect. European Union recommends that travelers from China be required to take a COVID-19 test before entering Europe. They are also required to wear face masks during flights and potentially subjected to random testing on arrival. Officials in China have criticized recently imposed testing requirements on travelers from the country and threatened to take reciprocal countermeasures. And now we turn to in our headlines that insecurity is one of the major preoccupations of the local population of the economic capital Douala as well as security forces. Our staffman Babila Jonathan will be taking us into the heart of Makea. Makea is a locality in the Douala 2 subdivision of the littoral region which is noted for the consumption as well as commercialization of hard drugs such as marijuana. Let's now go with Babila Jonathan. It's the center of drug consumption in Makia neighborhood in the Douala 2 subdivision. The uh, buildings that were here have been brought down on the instructions of the senior division officer of the Vuri division and several young people were converging here every day. We are told that about a hundred of them could gather here to consume drugs and they are still coming hoping that they can still continue with what they were doing here before. They are escaping for fear of being arrested by forces of law and order 
patrolling the area since the destruction of their hideouts. They have been doing this, running away when security forces are passing and coming back on their heels. Few minutes later, we perceive a group of gendarme officers from afar. They have arrested a young man. He is said to be one of the illegal drug dealers. The suspect is in possession of Indian hem and other hard drugs. Less than 10 minutes after the gendarme officers left the area with the suspect heading to the Dwala Central Prison, a buyer comes around and attempts to purchase the illegal drugs from the vigilante committee head who he took for a dealer. He tells us that there is high insecurity in Makia. Aggression, there is smoke, then come up a good drone, aggression. There is send me menace. The Vigilante committee members are verbally attacked and threatened by the drug addicts. They are not the guards of the quartier. They come d'ailleurs to venir nous polluer le quartier. The third class chief of Makia, his collaborators, and the administration are at war against insecurity in that part of Cameroon's economic hub, Douala. The police and National Gendarmerie have launched several crackdown operations in the area. The situation has been persisting for several years. However, some inhabitants tell us that the relative peace has been restored in the area after the destruction of hideouts of the suspected bandits and drug consumers. And now we also told you on the headlines, viewers, that the entire world is mourning the sudden demise of former Cameroonian striker Bami Modest, who reportedly died of a cardiac arrest in France. We bring you reactions from across the world, like that of FIFA President Gianni Infantino, that of fake food President Samuel Etofis, and also that of politicians like Professor Maurice Camto and also Kaji Sports Academy, where he trained, among other reactions, with Mala Glory. World football community is still in shock since the death of Cameroonian international footballer Modest Mbami. He died on Saturday the 7th in France after a cardiac arrest. And since the announcement of his death, the social media has been flooding with messages paying tribute to the star. Cameroonians and football lovers worldwide have expressed remorse over the passing away of the former midfielder, among which is the president of the International Federation of Football Association, Gianni Infantino. He wrote on his Instagram page a few hours after Mbamis dead. Such a sad news. Rest in peace, modest Mbami. Maurice Camto, president of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, also reacted on his Twitter page. I have just learned the death in Paris of the indomitable lion Modest Mbami. He contributed valiantly to the international graduation of our national football team. May his soul rest in peace. Samuel Etofis, president of the Cameroon Football Federation, on his Facebook page wrote, You left too early. Football lovers across the world now keep beautiful memories of Modest Mbami as the 40-year-old rose to limelight after scoring against Brazil during the quarterfinals at the Olympic football games in 2000. The death of Modest Mbami through heart attack this month sadly puts the spotlight the on recent deaths of other football players through cardiac arrest such as of our Czech national Day team. of Ari Coast, Mark peace. Vivian Fowey of Cameroon and and now on to the southwest region of the country where the local population of the southwest, especially from Kumba through Ekondo Titi to Mundemba, say the situation now is possible since works resumed at that road stretch some time ago and they also say the transport fare from Kumba to Ekondo Titi has moved from 7,000 francs to about 2,500 francs. Let's now have more about what the people plying that road from Kumba to Ekondo Titi are going through in this report. 
It is a site of relief for the population of Ekondo City and Komba in the southwest region. They can now travel to either towns at lower cost of 1,000 francs instead of 7,000 francs as before. This is because the road linking port, high transport, even Okada, will be paid from here to Kumba, 7,000, 10,000 10, for each, pass, each person. We used to pay between 7,000 and 10,000 francs from Kumba to Ikondo City. And sending our children to school was not easy as it was more expensive. I thank God how the road opened the road. Now if you pay from there to Kumba, 1,000 or 15. The road was inaugurated by the senior divisional officer from Meme Division, Tundong Chamberlain. During the ceremony, he called on the local population to embrace peace and assured them of a better security. Tell them that they should not be afraid. Nobody should tell them lies that you will go and see the SDO will kill you. Who going to kill you there? The SDO is your father who has received firm instructions from the head of state to remove all our children from the bushes and to allow them to start new life. While the population appreciate the efforts of the authorities, road users complain the coming of the rains might wash the soil away and call on government authorities to tar the Ikondo Titi Kumba Road. And now we come back to this other element. Inhabitants of some towns of Cameroon have expressed worries over the sale of wreaths and also coffins just beside hospital premises. They say it is shocking to patients who go to hospital for consultation. Just to mention that in other parts of the country, like in the northwest and southwest regions, it is not permitted for people or merchants to sell wreaths and also coffins around hospital premises. Let's now have what obtains here in the city of Douala uh, with our reporter Lucy Liengu is here. The sales of coffins and roofs at the entrance of hospitals in the city of Douala is gaining ground and causing panic. At the Nilong District Hospital, the presence of these funeral service merchants is the first image that welcomes all who come into contact with the health institution. The image, according to some, saddens their hearts. We are not happy seeing coffins in front of hospitals. Getting to a hospital, the first things you see are coffins. It seems like an agreement that people should be injected, killed, so that coffins can be bought. I think it's not good because it plays on the psychology of a patient. To me, they are supposed to be hidden. Others think the activity is inappropriate. Why growing up, coffins were not being sold in hospital premises. But rather, when you lost someone, then you go give a command for it to be made. While others have a positive view to this. I don't think it's an issue or a bad idea. Because if a patient dies, the family won't go far looking for a coffin to buy when it's sold by the hospital. At the Lacantini Hospital, the feeling is same with the presence of coffin shops at the principal entrance. Despite the presence of this activity, it should be recalled that six years ago, the former director of Lacantini, Professor Njok, prohibited the sales of coffins and roof at the hospital entrance. As he noted that it is not good for the psychology of a patient who hopes to find healing in a hospital.
And now a few days after, some people living at Vale Besengi here in Juala, their houses were destroyed with compensation still pending. Those in Lobo and Okola, in the central region, they say they are happy because they have been compensated over the destruction of their farmlands for electric and electricity um, currents to pass over their farmlands in the central region. And those who have not yet been compensated have been told to hold on. As you tell us, Smanji Kangibra. They were about 200 victims concerned with the compensation in line with the project of installation of the high tension line that passes through Okola and Lobo in the Lekia division of the center region. The victims received money ranging from 100,000 francs CFA to a larger amount depending on the destruction they incurred and according to the decree signed by the prime minister and head of government we are satisfied first of all that the amount corresponds to what they are being owed and the SDO assured the population that the appeals will be looked into after the payments must have been done so all those with appeals will have a favorable answer for this first phase 130 victims were compensated the administrative officials say the reason was because of the limited availability of funds the senior divisional officer of Lekier, Simo Patrick Kamsu, has assured that the situation will be looked into in the days ahead. We came out to pay the first phase and we worked on 130 names. I'm aware we are more than that. We already finished with those of Lobo and we are about to begin with those of Okola. We have informed those who are not happy that in the days ahead they will be fine. Nous avons informé tous les personnes intéressées de ce que ceux qui n'auront pas été satisfaits aujourd'hui le seront dans les semaines qui viennent. Launched in 2019 and financed by the World Bank, the high tension line will reinforce the electricity flow in five zones of the center and littoral regions when finished. Smanji Kangebe reporting, sir, and before we take leave of you, this note. Out of our national frontiers, the president of Côte d'Ivoire, Alassane Drama Ouattara, has welcomed um, home 46 soldiers who were detained in Mali after they were accused of being mercenaries. We are expecting to have those images on our screens. Their release comes six months after a court in Bamako, Mali, Mali's capital, sentenced them to 20 years in prison on charges of conspiring against uh, the Malian government and seeking to undermine state security. And that was what we put together for you on the news this evening on Equinox Television. Thank you, viewers, for always being there. But then square away, as usual, our programs continue. Equinox Swap begins at 7 p.m. And Julian Beth Bissai will be with you in the studio for the news in the French language. Stay with us on Equinox Television. Bye-bye for now. Equinox Télévision, au-delà de l'image, nous rendons compte. If you suspect you may have a coronavirus infection, please call your healthcare provider in advance and let them know you are coming. This can help them be prepared. WHO recommends preventive measures to reduce your risk. Wash your hands frequently using soap and water or an alcohol-based hand rub. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, or mouth. Avoid eating raw meat and unnecessary contact with wild animals. Avoid close contact with anyone with flu-like symptoms. When coughing and sneezing, cover your mouth and nose with a flex elbow. Or use a tissue. Take particular precaution while traveling. Seek medical care early.